when my men entered and mastered the ship, one of our lieutenants called for me. So accordingly, I jumped aboard. He told me that he thought that nobody but I ought to go to the great cabin, or at least nobody should go there before me. For there the lady and all her attendances were, and he thought the men being so eaters would murder them, or do worse. Well, I immediately went to the great cabin door, taking the lieutenant that called me along with me, and caused the cabin doors to be open. But never a sight of glory or misery had been seen by Buccaneer before. <laughs> for there, the queen, for what it was she was to have been, was there, all in gold and silver, frightened and crying. Well, the sight of me seemed almost trembling. Well, she sat on a kind of uh, bed, uh, like a like a couch with no canopy or, or any covering, like it was just me to be lied down upon. She was, in a manner, covered in diamonds. <laughs> and I, like a true pirate, made it known that I was more interested in the jewels than I was in the lady. <laughs> But before I touched her, I ordered the lieutenant to place a guard at the door and fasten the door, shut us both in, which he did. Well, the lady was young. And I suppose in a country's esteem, quite handsome, but she was not so much in my thoughts. At first, her uh, fright and danger of being killed taught her to do everything that she could do to interpose between her and danger, which was to take off her jewels as fast as she could and give them to me. <laughs> and I, with no great compliment, took them as fast as she could give them to me and put them in my pocket, <laughs> paying not much attention to them or of her, which frightened her the most. And she, well, she said something which, which I, I did not understand. <laughs> hmm. But then some of the ladies came up, you know, all crying and holding their hands and, and, and kneeling and what well, they meant at first, I know not. But with all their gestures and pointing, I realised they were begging for the Queen's life and for me not to kill her. Now, I've heard reports in England say that I ravished this lady and used her most barbarously. They do me wrong, for I never offered anything of the kind. Nay, I was so far not inclined to it that I did not like her. <laughs> we did, however, ravish them of all their wealth, for that is what we wanted, not the women. Nor was there any other ravishing in the great cabin, I can assure you. 